This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the hydrogenation of oils. We'll start by looking at the difference between fats and oils. Fats are solids at room temperature, whereas oils are liquids at room temperature. Fats are composed of molecules with carbon to carbon single bonds. Oils, on the other hand, are composed of molecules with carbon to carbon double bonds. On the left, we can see the structure of a saturated fatty acid that has carbon to carbon single bonds. On the right, we can see the structure of an unsaturated fatty acid that has carbon to carbon double bonds. The presence of carbon to carbon double bonds has an effect on the melting point of the fatty acid, which we look at next. The melting point of fats and oils depends on two factors. The first factor is the molar mass of the molecules. Greater molar mass results in stronger London dispersion forces between the molecules and a higher melting point. The second factor is the surface area between the molecules. Saturated fatty acid molecules have greater surface area between the chains, which results in stronger London dispersion forces and a higher melting point. Next we look at different fatty acids and their melting points. So in this table we have the name of the fatty acid, its formula, whether it is saturated or unsaturated, and its melting point. The first four examples are saturated fatty acids, with carbon to carbon single bonds. The melting point of the first four fatty acids increases as their molar masses increase. The last two fatty acids are unsaturated fatty acids with carbon to carbon double bonds. Oleic acid is a monounsaturated fatty acid which has one carbon to carbon double bond. Linoleic acid is a polyunsaturated fatty acid which has two carbon to carbon double bonds. If we look at the melting points, we can see that as the number of carbon to carbon double bonds increases, the melting point decreases. The more carbon to carbon double bonds there are in a fatty acid, the less surface area there is between the molecules, the weaker the London dispersion forces, and the lower the melting point. Next we look at hydrogenation. Hydrogenation converts liquid oils into solid or semi-solid fats. In hydrogenation, hydrogen is added to a carbon to carbon double bond. The reaction takes place at high pressure in the presence of a nickel catalyst. The product of the reaction is a saturated fatty acid with carbon to carbon single bonds. The advantages of hydrogenation are, it increases the melting point and it decreases the rate of oxidation, which means a longer shelf life. Partial hydrogenation can lead to the formation of trans fats that increase levels of LDL cholesterol. So here we can see the hydrogenation of a cis isomer. On the left we have complete hydrogenation which produces molecules with carbon to carbon single bonds. On the right we have partial hydrogenation which produces the trans isomer. The trans isomers are known as trans fats. And finally we look at the health effects of fats and oils. So trans fats and saturated fatty acids increase the levels of LDL cholesterol in the body. Polyunsaturated fatty acids can help lower the levels of LDL cholesterol in the body. LDL, which is low density lipoprotein, transports cholesterol to the arteries where it leads to thickening of the walls of the arteries. The main sources of LDL cholesterol are saturated fats, such as lauric acid, myristic acid and palmitic acid.